Hello, welcome to the Monday, July 19th, 2021 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. A couple of different diaries this weekend uh, from Xavier talking about various ways to uh, base encode uh, different uh, strings in order uh, to obfuscate them and evade malware detection. Most commonly, of course, we're dealing with base64 encoding, but uh, the idea basically is that we may have various character sets that are being used for encoding, not just the standard base64 character set in particular. Xavier is introducing here base 85 as a possible alternative to evade detection tools. And on Friday, Juniper released a number of patches, uh, probably the most uh, interesting and severe uh, vulnerability that's being addressed here is a vulnerability in steel belted radius, which of course is used for authentication in uh, Juniper's ecosystem. This vulnerability has a CVSS score of 9.8 and apparently it is a buffer overflow vulnerability that can lead uh, to arbitrary code execution on the radius server. Luckily, uh, this vulnerability is only exploitable if enhanced EAP logging uh, with a trace level of uh, 2 is enabled. Patches are available for affected systems, uh, but as an immediate fix, you could also just check the logging settings. And a remote code execution vulnerability was also disclosed for fail to ban. A fail to ban, very popular package that allows you to automatically add firewall rules for IP addresses that continually fail authentication, for example. And one particular module of the fail to ban package allows the lookup of who is information and sending emails to an administrator, including that information. Sadly, uh, the input received from the Whois data is not properly escaped, so theoretically someone would be able uh, to construct a malicious Whois uh, record and then as the system locks it up after being attacked from an affected IP address, it would execute the code embedded in the Whois data. This is certainly somewhat possible. Uh, there have been cases where, for example, JavaScript and such was added added to who is data in order to trigger uh, cross-site scripting vulnerabilities. But overall, of course, exploitation will be tricky. Also requires that these specific uh, modules, in particular the mail who is module, is enabled. And Amnesty International uh, did uh, release an extensive uh, report regarding the NSO Group's uh, Pegasus uh, tool. The NSO Group is an Israeli company and uh, Pegasus is a tool that they are selling in particular uh, to nation states that uh, does have a reputation of being able to uh, be very good at breaching mobile devices and essentially install backdoors and surveillance software on mobile devices without the victim actually realizing what's happening. Of course, NSO Group's assertion is that uh, this tool is used sort of for uh, legal uh, purposes. However, Amnesty International found that a number of journalists, for example, were infected by this tool. The report lists a number of artifacts that you may be able to use to identify a Pegasus and detect if a particular phone is or was in the past infected by a Pegasus. The report also discusses some of the capabilities of a Pegasus, for example, how it is able to access iMessage or photos and also some of the vulnerabilities that it takes advantage of. And one feature common to most password safe applications is the ability to automatically uh, pre-fill passwords as you open a login page. This is kind of a nice convenient feature, also has a little bit of uh, security purpose in the sense that the password uh, safe, of course, will double check whether or not it inserts the passwords in the correct page. That's usually better than let the user figure it out. But the problem here is that, for example, 
example, with cross-site scripting, a password safe may be tricked into inserting passwords into the wrong form on a particular page. And that, of course, can then be used uh, to exfiltrate the passwords. Not really sure how much is really a problem of these password safe applications. If you do have cross-site scripting on a login page, then of course, an attacker should always be able to modify the login form, even the existing login form, to exfiltrate credentials, even if the user entered them manually. So don't really see it as much as a weakness with these password safe applications, but more a fundamental problem with having cross-site scripting in a login page, which certainly happens, but luckily isn't uh, that terribly common. Well, and the zit for today. Thanks again for listening. Just a reminder, the podcast should also be available as an Amazon Flash briefing. So if you want to wake up for this with your Amazon Alexa, then feel free to add this podcast. Thanks, and that's it. Talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.